Hey guys, LevelCap here. Today I want to talk to you about my experiences playing Overwatch. Now, I was invited out to Blizzard HQ. It's actually pretty darn close to where I live, about 17 minute drive. And I got to play several rounds of Overwatch. Now, I can't really talk too much about the details of the new things I saw, but what I can talk about is stuff that you kind of already have public information on, and my general opinions on just how the gameplay was, the game balance, the game flow, how much I enjoyed it. Now, before sitting down to play several hours worth of Overwatch, we kind of got some introductions to the game, a little tour of the campus, and got to talk to a lot of the developers. Now, there's quite a few developers there, and one thing I noticed uh, when talking to them, whether it was a producer, an animator, a level designer, QA, tester, they were all extremely proud of the game and extremely proud of their work and they played the heck out of the game no matter who they were on the team they were playing that game pretty much every day at least every day they could and later in the evening the developers had an exhibition match against some pro tf2 players the devs just wiped the floor with them now obviously they had a big advantage from playing the game a lot before the pro tf2 players but they're still playing against pro tf2 players and being able to beat them so easily was really impressive and a testament to their overall skill and passion for the game and i I really think that there's few things that speak stronger about a development team or the quality of a game than game devs that really, really love playing their own game. Now how about my experiences playing for the very first time? I had seen all the footage from BlizzCon that was available, I'd read some articles on people who had played the game at BlizzCon, and I was optimistic about the game but also recognizing that it looked very similar to Team Fortress 2. Now I kind of come from a tactical shooter background so it wasn't necessarily a game that looks like perhaps like the ultimate thing that I'd be interested in, but the fact that Blizzard's making a shooter definitely perked my interest. So when I got the invite to this event, I was more than happy to show up. Now when I hopped into the game for the first time, I was presented with the character selection screen. I quickly picked Tracer. I had an idea that I wanted to play her first because her abilities look fairly straightforward and I like the idea of playing a more aggressive character. So I popped into the game with her and there's very few buttons that you have to learn. There isn't a whole complex weapon selection setup. There isn't some super advanced key binding screen where you have to go and bind like 40 different controls. Aside from the basic WASD movement controls, jumping, crouching, and melee, there's only three abilities that you really have to worry about. That's shift for one of your abilities, E for another ability, and Q for your super ability. Now these can all be rebound to different controls if you'd like, but there's only three real buttons aside from the main movement controls that you really need to worry about. This makes learning any character fairly straightforward. I mean, learning three different abilities, really not that complicated. However, like many Blizzard games, they're very simple, easy to learn, but much more complex once you really get into the details and the strategy, and Tracer is very much one of those characters. She has a fast movement speed and carries two pulse pistols. These things shoot extremely fast and reload extremely fast. There's no aiming down sights with these guns, so right click actually doesn't have a function as of yet. In fact, you could and probably will want to bind that to one of her other abilities. Now Tracer's primary movement ability is called Blink, and this allows her to teleport quickly up to three times in a row around the map. This charges up fairly fast, and you don't necessarily have to use it three times in a row. You could use it once, you could use it twice. And this specific ability combos really well with her other ability, which is Recall. This allows her to teleport back to a spot she was several seconds earlier. And both of her previous abilities combo really well with her final ability, which is a Pulse Bomb. This one takes a while to charge up, but what you can do is basically blink in close, place a pulse bomb, and then use your recall ability to get out of there quickly. The pulse bomb will kill pretty much anything in one hit, as far as I understand at this point. So anyway, that's a breakdown on Tracer, and when I started playing her, it was pretty easy to get into her abilities. They're fairly straightforward, not too complicated, not too hard to combo with each other, and uh, it was a fun character to play. Her little pulse pistols are a lot of fun in close quarters. The fact that they reload quickly combos perfectly with her movement ability, so you can fire a shot, um, basically blink somewhere else, fire some more, blink somewhere else, fire again, keep on blinking, and then you can recall and just keep your opponents always guessing as to where you're going to be. Now obviously she can be taken down, she doesn't have very much health compared to other characters out there, so uh, any uh, powerful attack will pretty much wipe her out. Her speed makes her a great flanking character too, especially when the enemy team has some defenses set up, you can basically flank around, get behind shields and turrets, and take them out when needed. Now by herself she's a very effective character, 
but some of the brilliance in the way that this game was designed is the fact that every character can become that much more effective when properly comboed with other characters in the game. For example, Reinhardt, the large tank character that has a big shield in front of him, combos really well with the Bastion character who plays a mech that can transform into a stationary turret. Uh, Reinhardt's shield offers extra protection to Bastion, who is one of the more powerful weapon platforms in the game. However, his weakness is that he can't move when he's in his turret mode. So if he's got extra shield provided by Reinhardt and some good melee defense in close quarter, all of a sudden you have a really, really powerful defensive combo. But as I found while playing, each sort of epic ability or epic combo seems to have a pretty good counter against it. And that sort of emerges and you start to figure it out as you play more and more. And you perhaps will be coming up with new combos that the developers hadn't even thought of before and there'll have to be some extra balancing going on but uh, there's really a new level of teamwork being shown in Overwatch that I really haven't seen in other shooters out there. Sure, there's a lot of teamwork in Battlefield and a lot of teamwork in Team Fortress 2, but I really think they're taking it to a new level in Overwatch. Now, another thing I was curious about with this game is, what is the skill curve on this game? How good can you get with a character to make it that much more effective? And I have to say it's pretty high. I think some of the characters are definitely characters that do really well when you have excellent teamwork and then other characters can do really well on their own regardless of how good your team is. When watching some of the more experienced developers play the game it was pretty clear to see just how high that skill curve could be. They were doing some cool combos like placing turrets on a moving payload in one of the game modes, uh, having Winston the big gorilla put down a shield around that turret, and just setting up these cool little combos that we weren't necessarily thinking of within the first few hours of playing the game. There's also some extremely good Widowmaker players in the game. I was watching one in particular. She did some crazy moves like when being chased, she'd jump off a ledge and mid-air turn around, shoot her little grappling hook back up onto that ledge and be back up on that ledge as her pursuer like fell off the ledge or went off the ledge chasing her. Now Black Widow is certainly a character that benefits from having extremely good accuracy as a first person shooter player. What if you're not that great of a shooter player? Or what if you want to play on an equal footing with some of those awesome Twitch Reflex players out there? Well, there's definitely some characters you can play that don't require that specific kind of skill set. They're actually more strategy based. Reinhardt is a large tank that requires tactical maneuvering around the map, but he doesn't require as much accuracy as you might think. He's got some AOE attacks, his melee attack is great in close quarters, but you're not going to necessarily need that kind of headshot precision to be good with him. Likewise, Symmetra has a photon projector for her primary weapon and this auto targets enemies for you so you don't even have to really aim that well to be good with her. She also places down lots of turrets and has cool little abilities that kind of auto target teammates and give them shields and stuff like that. So again her character is based much more on strategy rather than your headshotting ability. The characters themselves are so unique that not only does it require different skill sets to play them, but it's probably going to attract different players to different characters entirely. And I can already see a lot of people just focusing on one hero alone and not even bothering with any of the other ones. And then you'll probably have those players who really want to try and master all of them. Personally, while playing, I had the strong desire to just focus on one hero and master that one hero, but I really wanted to try all of them as much as possible. And I found that while switching between the different heroes, the movement abilities and the general abilities uh, made it difficult to switch between them so quickly because just as you're getting used to one then you switch to another one and it's a whole nother skill set to learn. So that aspect of the game could be a little bit daunting for new players and I can see people wanting to stick around with one hero for a while before trying something new. So anyway I came away from the event with a very positive experience and uh, most importantly the desire to continue playing it. I think that was the hardest part of leaving the event was thinking like oh man how how long is it going to be before I actually get to play this game again? Got to wait for beta. Now I know there's always somebody out there that's going to say I'm being paid to say positive things about this game. Wasn't paid to come to the event. I was given a poster at the event that had a lot of developer signatures on there. That was a kind of cool little gift for going to the event, but uh, I would like to think that it hasn't swayed my opinion overall. I think Blizzard's certainly putting together a quality game there, and that shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone with Blizzard's track record. Now, of course, there is that one question that 
that everybody keeps asking, is this going to be a free-to-play game? Is it going to be something you have to buy outright? This was asked while we were at the event, and again, the developers gave the same answer they've given before. They still don't really know. If I had a guess, though, I would say it's probably going to be free-to-play. It doesn't appear that there's going to be a single-player element to this game. So for a multiplayer-only shooter, asking for full retail price is probably a little high. I would expect to see either a very low retail price or the free-to-play model, as we've seen Free-to-play has been very successful with Hearthstone, so Blizzard's at least got some experience in that realm. Anyway, that was my experience of playing Overwatch at Blizzard. I think they've got a strong contender for a good esports game in the near future. I really want to play it again, and I really want to start perfecting some of those heroes. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.